Hello and welcome to MC Explained, an investor education initiative brought to you by Money Control and Investco Mutual Fund. We are not going to go all technical today. Rather, we are going to try to make sense of the basics. And the basics always boil down to behavior. Have you ever noticed the mistakes you make with your investments? Mistakes which are easily avoidable just by tweaking behavior. Today, we are discussing a few such investment mistakes and how you can avoid them. Let's begin with letting your emotions take charge. Now, that's an investing mistake too. When it comes to investing in market-linked financial investments like mutual funds and especially equity-oriented mutual funds, you must know that there is going to be volatility in your investment value. Not just that, you will see that the market itself is volatile and moving up and down on a daily basis. This kind of movement can make you and me very nervous. After all, humans are emotional beings and seeing a swaying market can surely evoke some of those emotions. The danger is that in turn, emotions will impact behavior and before you know it, you have reacted thanks to your emotions and taken action with your investments which actually hurts your chances of maximizing long-term return. When emotions begin to infringe, just remind yourself that capital markets and equities in particular are volatile in the short term, moving left to right while walking the path. In the long term, however, say over five years or more, markets move in the direction that fundamentals show and in case of a growing economy like India, so far it's upwards. Equities are a long-term asset. If you want to earn from compounded gains in equity, it's important to remain invested without letting your emotions dictate the way forward. The second investing mistake is stopping your regular investments when the market's correct. When we witness a market correction, we are looking at stock prices heading lower and our portfolio gains getting eroded. This is not a pretty sight to behold and emotions that we just spoke about creep up and nudge us to get out before it's too late. However, if you have been smart enough to pick systematic investment plans as your investment strategy to regularize your mutual fund investments, it's even smarter if you ignore emotions and remain invested through market corrections. Let me explain why. What your SIP does is invest a defined amount like say rupees 10,000 a month in a scheme of your choice. If the price of the scheme is rupees 20 per unit in a given month, you will get 500 units. Let's assume that six months later, the market has corrected and hence the price of your mutual fund unit has fallen and is now rupees 18 per unit. Your SIP instruction is still for rupees 10,000 to be invested every month. So at rupees 18 per unit, you will now get approximately 555 units. More units mean more gains once the markets turn and start moving up again. It's just simple math. Stay invested and continue your SIP through market corrections. The third investing mistake we are talking about is disregarding risk. While we are on the subject of market corrections, let's understand that all types of investments come with risks. You cannot wish it away. The return you expect is correlated to the underlying risk. What's more important than wishing away risk is understanding the underlying risk in an investment before you buy and also having the ability to ride through it if the risk does play out. The basic risk you are contending with is that of losing capital value in your investment. This can happen due to many reasons, external factors, internal factors, inflation, demand supply mismatch, just to name a few. Not only do you have to be aware of the risks, you must also know how to navigate through them. For example, fixed income investments usually come with high degree of capital safety and low price volatility in the short term, provided that the risk of poor quality is low. At the same time, equity investments come with high risk of volatility in the short term, but good quality equity investments smoothen out this risk over time. 
As per SEBI mandate, each mutual fund scheme has a riskometer which depicts the level of risk and you can have a look at what you are getting into before you invest. It's in your favor to equip yourself with this information and also understand the specific risk involved in the scheme you choose before committing your money. Now, uh, the next investing mistake is letting panic get the better of you. Let's also understand that taking risks can cause anxiety. In March 2020, when we saw the equity markets moving down, down and further down, our own anxiety levels were moving up, up and further up. Capital markets do see price corrections in moments of external chaos. The chaos itself can make you anxious and top that with falling portfolio value and the heart starts palpitating really fast. In such moments, take a step back, breathe, think about why the market is correcting and whether that factor is external to the markets or denotes something fundamentally wrong with our markets. Then try to assess whether the situation, be it external or internal, is temporary or permanent. If it is an external, temporary factor causing the market to panic, you should already realize that you have no need to follow the panic as the expectation is likely to course correct. If it is a temporary internal issue, then try to assess whether market regulators and participants are themselves trying to fix it and course correct. Unless the economy underlying the capital market is going into decades long recession, it's unlikely there is any permanent internal reason that markets correct and go on declining for the foreseeable future. In the last 100 years, we know that no equity market has gone to zero. Instead of panicking, think back to the reason that you have invested in the markets, your goal. Remain invested as long as your investment is catering to that goal and you are well within the time frame to achieve it. Let your investment goals decide your buy and your sell decisions. And remember, equities are always more remunerative in the long run. One way to address panic is to diversify your investments across more than one type of asset. But don't get trapped into navigating too many investments. Now that we are talking about diversification, let's also be wary of diversifying too much. If you are going to pile up every type of asset from commodities to currency to gold and equity, you may find it hard to manage. It's not just the understanding of the asset, but also the transactions, which are going to be too many to manage. To diversify across assets, use assets which complement each other in terms of risk. For example, gold and equity have a negative or low correlation, which means you can expect gold prices to move up when equities are correcting. This kind of diversification can help you limit the downside on your portfolio returns when one asset fails to deliver. It's also important not to over diversify within one asset class, which means don't just load up on scheme after scheme. Every incremental investment allocation does not need a new fund or a new stock. If you are invested in something that already works well for you, equity schemes can have anywhere between 25 to 65 or more individual stocks. You don't really need to add a new fund each time you have a fresh investment to make. Instead, try to pick funds with varying investment styles and make your diversification count. When you are indulging in a bit of asset allocation across more than one asset, the temptation is also there to try and time your moves. Equities have run up too fast, too much, Let's sell and move into gold. Real estate looks well poised. Let's buy property. Asset markets and prices are by and large unpredictable. More so in the short term, trying to time the market will add more on the transaction front rather than the return side. And remember, if you are timing your exit, you must also time your re-entry. And on top of that, you have to keep repeating this pattern successfully to make money in the long run. It's really a tough ask. 
Instead, focus on accumulating good quality investments and match them with your goals. Different goals match assets with different risk profiles. For example, a goal for which you need funds in say a year cannot be matched with equity. On the other hand, a goal which is 10 years away needs to have some equity as an investment. Instead of trying to figure out whether now is a good time to be invested or should you buy or sell, try to figure out whether the asset you are invested in matches your goal and as you come closer to achieving your goal, that exit call can be taken. Now another investing mistake we make is relying on trading strategies. A nice tip to buy and sell a security is always exciting. You can double your money. Just buy it now. It's the best price you will get for this stock. Buy now or it will never come back. All such strategies of buying and selling over a few days or weeks or months are trading strategies. But they are worth little else other than the excitement value. Market regulator SEBI pointed out in its in-house research that 90% of traders in the equity derivatives market lose money. Not only do you get the trade wrong, but also end up paying too much in brokerage charges for frequent transactions. In managed funds like mutual funds, qualified professionals build portfolios based on research and analysis of fundamentals rather than relying on trading strategies. These are long-term portfolios built to compound wealth by beating inflation. Hence, rather than relying on that exciting tip, which may or may not work out, pick a qualified fund manager to build a portfolio where you can invest money regularly. Now, another mistake we make is investing without due research. Investment research is needed not just for picking stocks, but it's also very important when it comes to picking the right mutual fund scheme. There are already too many to choose from and hence don't jump into every new fund offer that comes up. Check the style of the investment manager, the consistency of the fund's performance, the portfolio attributes, the longevity of the fund manager and so on and so forth before you pick a fund you want to invest in. It's important to do your research upfront rather than choosing an underperforming inconsistent scheme which does not match your risk profile and then regretting that decision when it's too late. The next investing mistake I'm talking about is postponing your investment till a later date. Procrastination is perhaps the biggest mistake that investors make. The fact is, the earlier you start investing, especially in an asset like equity, the more time you give your returns to compound and hence the more you have to gain. Returns increase substantially from year 10 of your investment to say year 25 if you remain invested. But also to reach year 25 of your investment, you must begin early enough. The good news is that you no longer need large lump sums to start investing in growth assets like equity. What's more, you can automate and regularize your investment and pick a winning professional to manage your portfolio. This is the benefit of investing through mutual funds. You can start early in life with as little as rupees 100 a month and keep investing regularly to build and grow your corpus. Mutual fund managers are qualified and experienced equity portfolio managers and the funds themselves are regulated by a market regulator. All this can be done by starting a monthly SIP and topping it up along the way. Thanks to technology, this is all possible online in a matter of minutes. Now you have no more excuses to delay the start of your mutual fund journey, so better start investing now. Another mistake is holding on to your underperformers. In the last part of this discussion, let's focus on review. As is the case with anything in life, it's important to review 
and rebalance at appropriate intervals. While equity investments are long-term in nature, from time to time when you review performance of your schemes, you may realize that you are invested in a serial underperformer or that the fund manager who made the fund a winner is gone and replaced by someone who isn't managing as well. It's important to check in on your investment. You define the frequency, just don't make it too frequent. Understand that uh, fund managers also need some time to show performance. Hence, a 12 to 24 month period could be suitable for such a review. Whatever time frame you choose, an honest review and then acting on the review can help you keep your portfolio returns most efficient in the long term. While you shouldn't pile up on too many schemes, holding on to those that are under delivering compared to the peer set and the benchmark is also detrimental to your financial health. So there you have it. We have now discussed 10 investing mistakes that you should avoid and how you can do that. Hope you too find this list of mistakes useful and don't fall into the trap that your emotions and behavior may lead you to, if this remains unchecked. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.